okay, year eight. After our big lesson over the last few days, learning all of the terms to do with algebra, today we're going to actually do something. We're going to look at substituting positive numbers into algebraic expressions. That word expressions, okay, that word expressions, we have learned over the last few lessons what an expression is. An expression is a statement that may include pronumerals, okay? It may have pronumerals that have coefficients, so it may have a coefficient with it as well, okay? They may have constants, so actual numbers like 4, 8, 7, things that don't change, and they're all separated by operators, okay? All separated by pluses and minuses or divisions or sometimes multiplication. Now, I haven't been able to really do too much with the expressions that I've looked at so far. All you've been asked to do is identify how many terms or talk to me about what the coefficient for certain terms is in an expression, okay? You've been asked to maybe identify a pronumeral or write some expressions for your own. But you haven't been able to actually solve anything. Why? Why haven't you been able to solve anything? Well, most of the expressions you've been looking at are something a little bit like this. 2x plus 3 minus b. Now, we know that the pronumerals in here are x and b. And we know that a pronumeral represents something we don't know. I can't solve this expression here unless someone tells me exactly what x equals and exactly what b equals. If someone tells me what they equal, then I can solve it, but I can't solve it until someone tells me. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do the telling. In substituting, I'm going to give you a value for your pronumerals and you're going to learn out how to replace the pronumerals for the value and actually work out the expression. So let's get going. So substitution, like I've just said, involves replacing pronumerals like x or y or whatever we're using with numbers and obtaining a single number as a result. For example, we can evaluate 4 plus x when x is 11. So if I get given an expression that says 4 plus x and I get told x is 11, okay, thanks for telling me, that must mean that it's 4 plus 11, which equals 15. Super. So today we're going to do some substituting of our very own. So given that t equals 5, evaluate the following. Now I'll give them some a's and b's. I couldn't do that when I made this, but I'll put them in there now. Okay, let's look at this first example. Given that t equals 5, t plus 7, so it's going to be 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7 equals 12. You're working out, sorry, we'll go down the page. Okay, you're working out, we'll go down the page. I just don't have enough room to work it down the page. Oh, let's have a look at this next example. It says 8t, but there's no operation going on. I haven't been given one. What does that mean when you see a number next to a pronumeral? What operation's going on? Multiplication, that's right. So that actually means 8 times t. And so if t equals 5, that's 8 times 5. 8 times 5 equals 40. Okay, 8 times 5 equals 40. Remember that if you see, oh, whoops. If you see a number and a pronumeral, that is what that means. Okay, it means multiplication. Let's have a look at our next example. Oh, holy moly, that last one looks a little bit complicated, doesn't it? Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that. Oop, I got rid of everything. Whoops. Okay. All I need to do is substitute in this algebraic expression and work it out. So let's rewrite it. 10 divided by t t, so t equals 5, plus 4 minus 5. Oh, my.
my gosh, how do I know how to do this? The first thing I have to remember is I need to go back to bod mass, okay? So bod mass was my order of operations, and it told me the order in which I have to perform things, okay? So I know that the division comes first, brackets, opera, orders, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction, okay? So 10 divided by 5 is 2, and I'll rewrite everything the same way it was, plus 4 minus 5. There was no brackets, there was no orders. I just did the division. There's no multiplication. I need to do the addition first, okay? So 2 plus 4 is 6 minus 5. I'm keeping everything under lines, so I've added those two together. 6 minus 5 equals 1. So I always have to follow my order of operations, guys. Okay, substitute if x equals 4 and y equals 7. Let's try and work these out. Okay, let's just take it slowly. Again, I'll be following bod mass in order to work these out. So, 5x. Now, there's no operation going on there. How do I know what operation's going on there? If there's a number next to a pronumeral, it means, yep, multiplication. Well done. So, x equals 4, that's 5 times 4 plus y equals 7, so y plus 8. Okay, what's 5 times 4? 5 times 4 is 20 plus 7 plus Eight, and I'm just going to do it really slow one step at a time. 27 plus 8. Okay, 27, and now I've gone on to my next line, but that's okay. 27 plus 8 equals 35. Okay, just took it nice and slowly, guys, one step at a time. Okay, this next one looks a little bit tricky, but it's actually quite easy. Okay, so... Let's have a look. Rightio. 80, I'm going to start up here. 80, subtract. 2, now what's, oh, 2 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 7. Oh gosh, that looks tricky. 2 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 7 plus 7. Oh, holy moly. Okay, let's, let's look inside my brackets. 80 subtract. 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. 8 multiplied by 7 is 56 plus 7. So what I've done there is I've just done this multiplication in here. So 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 7 is 56. And I've simplified that. 80 subtract. Now, 56 plus 7 is 63. There's an interesting thing here to note, guys. There is no number directly outside my brackets. I know brackets means multiply, but it's actually just everything in the brackets multiplied by the negative symbol. Okay, it's everything in the brackets multiplied by the negative. So in order to get that out of the brackets, all I have to do is get rid of them. Okay, because it's just multiplied by the negative symbol. 80 subtract 63 gives me an answer of 17. Okay, one step at a time. Really, really slowly work using those orders of operations. Okay, the next examples that I'm going to show you are a little bit tricky. So if you've got up to this point and you're thinking, mm, okay, I'm just getting it. Maybe it's a good idea to stop here. If you thought, yeah, no, that seemed pretty okay, I want you to write down these next examples. And here they are. Okay, these very last examples. Now, a reminder, when these have these little twos here, that means squared or cubed or whatever's on the bottom or on the base multiplied by itself that many times. So how do I write this first example? Well, if p squared means p multiplied by itself twice, another way of writing that would be 
oh, whoops, I didn't mean to move that, would be 3 times, that's one instance of P, that's another instance of P. So 3 times P times P. Okay, so what does P equal? P equals 4. So 3 times 4 times 4. What are 3 4s? Okay, 3 4s are 12. 12 times 4 is 48. So my answer for this one is 48. Okay, it's very important to first expand it, then substitute it in, and then find the answer. Let's look at the next one. I've got p to, t to the power of 2 plus p to the power of 3. So t multiplied by itself twice and p multiplied by itself three times. So t, that's just another way of writing t times t. I've written my t's funny so I don't get them confused with my plus signs. I'll do my plus in another colour as well. Plus p to the power of 3. So p times p times p. Now let's substitute it in. 5 times 5 plus 4 times 4 times 4. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4. Oh, 16 times 4. Well, 10 times 4 is 40. 6 times 4 is 24. So 40 plus 24 is 64. See how I worked that out, guys, in my head? Don't know my 16 times tables, but if I break it down, it makes it so much easier. Okay, plus 64. 25 plus 64 equals 89. One step at a time, just nice and slow. Okay, this symbol that I have in here is called a square root symbol. And we will need our calculator, okay? We'll need our calculator to do this. First off, we have to work out what's in there, and then we need to find the square root of it, okay? So I've got P squared, so P times P, P multiplied by itself twice, plus 3 squared, so 3 times 3. P times P, P equals 4, let's sub it in. 4 times 4 plus 3 times 3. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 times 3 is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay. When I square something, I multiply it by itself. When I find the square root of something, I want to know what number multiplied by itself gets that answer. Now, some of you will need to use your calculator, but let's think. If we know our times tables, we will know there is a number, a whole number, that when multiplied by itself, gets 25. So, 1 times 1 is, well, 1, that can't be it. 2 times 2, so 2 multiplied by itself is 4. 3 times 3, 3 multiplied by itself is 9. 4 times 4 is 16, we're getting close. 5 times 5, oh, hey! 5 times 5 is 25, so the square root of 25 equals 5, because 5 multiplied by itself is 25. I know you've learned a lot today, guys, but that's it. That's substitution.